Blog Talk Radio. Hi, everyone. This is Marty McDermott, the president of Franchise Interviews, and I can't start today's show without talking about the ISO 10002. You know, some people just love to complain, but companies have a responsibility to care. The International Organization for Standardization, ISO, has revised ISO 10002, the standard for complaint handling. This document enables organizations to foster a customer-focused environment, open the feedback, heightening their customer satisfaction. You can get the ISO 10002 standard from the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, U.S. member body of ISO. Visit ANSI.org forward slash complain to learn more. That's ANSI.org forward slash complain to learn more. Franchise Interviews. From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews has been giving an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now... Welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 14 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs of all one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show today. Well, we're meeting with Giuseppe Grammatico. And Giuseppe is a franchise veteran who simplifies the process of franchising and excels at guiding his candidates to the model that best suits them. And we're going to talk to Giuseppe about that in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around because we have a great show. Are you one of those special people who are willing to go after your dreams and goals? Are you ready to fulfill that dream of owning your own business with the security of a proven brand, the opportunity to take control of your future, and own a Rita's Italian Ice franchise is within your reach. Rita's is seeking success-oriented individuals who are ready to make a change in their life, and Rita's offers unparalleled training and support to assure your success. And did you know the frozen treat industry is a recession-proof industry and there are Rita's in 23 states currently with 540 stores open. Rita's Italian Ice has been around for 25 years and is listed as a top performing franchise by the Wall Street Journal. Now here's the really good part. Rita's Italian Ice is a unique and amazing taste treat. It's smoother than a snow cone and it combines ice with real fresh fruit. The real fruit adds dramatically to the taste and it comes in over 40 flavors. The ice and fruit are mixed on site and made fresh daily and it is delicious. You'll want to know more about this exciting and successful franchise opportunity. Go to www.ownaritas.com and get all your questions answered. That's www.ownaritas.com to take control of your dreams and future today. You don't want to wait any longer to be a part of this adventure. www.ownaritas.com Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, LLC, and you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews, from Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 14 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs of one one I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show today. Well, we're meeting with Giuseppe Grammatico, and Giuseppe is a franchise veteran who simplifies the process of franchising and excels at guiding his candidates to the model that best suits them. Giuseppe is also the author of Franchise Freedom. Giuseppe, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Great, Marty. Very excited to be here. And you, and you nailed my name. Very very uh, few people can uh, pronounce it, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I have to admit, my name is Irish, but I'm half Italian. So, <laughs> All right, And I have go. a cousin that I call Giuseppe. Yeah, so. <laughs> so I, I thought I'd have that one. It's great to have you on the show, too, Giuseppe. I recognize the area code, too. Where are you calling from today? 
Uh, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in uh, Point Pleasant, right on the shore in New, uh, New Jersey. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Point Pleasant is, is one of my favorite places. We go down to Spring Lake a lot, and we try to hit Point Pleasant like once a year, you know, so it, it's, it's, oh, it's great. a great place, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fantastic place. It's so. a boardwalk, and yeah, and all the... Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We, we love it here. <laughs> it's fantastic, yeah. Uh, um, so... Maybe we can kind of go back to the beginning, Giuseppe. You know, I, you know, we started the show, you know, guys, it's going to be 15 years, but, you know, we always found that, mm-hmm. you know, people like yourself, they always have a story, you know, and I was kind of going through yours and I said, wow, this is really interesting. Maybe you can kind of like go back to that time where you got involved in franchising or maybe even a little before that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I was looking at the past show. It's a very, very impressive list of, of guests. Um, Thank you. Yeah, got into France. Yeah, it was, it's been very, very, very impressive. Um, I got into franchising back in 2006, 2007, and yeah. um, was a was a corporate refugee. Someone someone had uh, coined that phrase, and uh, <laughs> you know, first generation Italian worked in the in the restaurant business, yeah. and uh, you know, did the whole college thing. Went went to school, got a great job in the investment world, and just just hated it. Had a very yeah. long commute. I knew I wanted to own a business, but I knew it wasn't right. a, a restaurant with the with the weekends and things like that. Sure. So um I hired a hired a coach, um kinda helped me figure out what was next. We we looked at employment to completely rule it out and just said, you know what? Mm-hmm. I don't want another job. They they they're they're all the same, the commutes are long, it's just yeah. not nothing wrong with it, not not for right. me. So we, we uh we looked at entrepreneurship, loved the idea of, of, of a business just didn't know what it would be. So right. after some um, research and work, we uh, we figured out I, I wanted something with systems in place. Mm-hmm. Fast forward from there, ironically, I actually uh, uh, filled out an application and was called by a franchise consultant. You know, basically wow. what I'm doing That's today. Great. And um, you know, sat down with them. We we narrowed it down, figured out franchising was indeed a, a great fit, and. Right. We looked at several companies and, uh, as I mentioned, got involved back oh six oh seven and uh, been loving it ever since. It must be helpful to you too, uh, Gi- Giuseppe, because you know, I mean, having that background in franchising, you know, it, it sometimes, you know, a lot of times when I have guests on the show, they've never been like a franchisee, you know, and they don't have any experience, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that certainly helps you a bit as you're meeting with your your, your prospective clients. Yes, absolutely. I I always say I'm not the only consultant out there, but one thing to ask is, have you owned a franchise? Have you owned right. a business? Because it's right. very very hard to, in my opinion, to relate to to people that have never actually yeah. owned a business. So yes, I yeah. I give my story and, and my viewpoint and experiences. So I I, uh, I hope they they see value in that. Of course, of course. And what what do you like most about franchising, Giuseppe? I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're sold on the concept. You know, you kind of mentioned that you know you didn't want to reinvent the wheel, you know, it's, it, it, and, and that's a lot of work, you know, it's just to, to invent the wheel, you know? So, I, I mean, I'm sure that was one of the things. Is there anything else you like about franchising or I know one of your presentations as you described, you know, the benefits of franchising, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, I don't, I don't say franchising is best for everyone. It's giving sure. you what's, what's the best fit for you. Right. So um, right. there, there's huge, huge leverage. I mean, with franchising, uh, it's almost like every time we have a meeting, it's a it's a mastermind group where I get yeah. to compare notes with hundreds, uh, if not thousands, depending on the brand franchisees uh, you know, around the world. So it, it's right. great uh, as far as that. Uh, the systems are in place. The the, mm-hmm. the economy is a scale. I mean, you look at certain franchises, which I do not own a painting franchise, but for this example, just the economy yeah. of the scale. The discounts they're getting versus just being a, a standalone right. painter. Has, yeah. has some huge benefits, but yeah, just yeah. market exposure, branding. Um, you know, it, 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 there's a ton out there, and, and the support. If if I need help, I have someone right. I can contact that will right. maybe either come to my location or help me out, and that's that's huge. You know, especially in business today. I think so too. It, it, it's interesting. I mean, from your experience, Giuseppe, uh, when you're meeting with someone for the first time, you know, and I've I've, I've had this story in the past. You know, is um, I, I remember many years ago we were interviewing um, some franchisees to I think it was Fish Window Cleaning, and and these mm-hmm. gentlemen they were surprised that that was a match for them. You know, they they ended up loving it. You know, but when they were first presented, and they met with a franchise consultant as well they were a little skeptical. They're like, well, window cleaning. They're like, I I Mm -hmm. never pictured that. Do you, do you have that happen to you on occasion where someone's surprised that maybe an industry that you kind of like point them to and say, you know, maybe you want to go in this direction. 
A- absolutely. It ha- it happens uh it happens often. It happened to me. Yeah. Um and you know what I tell people is start with a clean slate. Let, let's let's figure out a model, a business that that'll work for you and and so we look at skill sets, interests. Right. Um and and ultimately what's what's your motivation? Because mm. if your motivation is is time freedom because I'm I'm working right. with a, with a couple right now, a young young family and they want to travel the world and they want a lifestyle yeah. business that will will allow them to leave for a couple months and travel to Europe uh you right. know with their young daughter and you know what what businesses will you know be a good match for 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 something like that so you know don't look at the product or service i i think we we should do things in reverse figure out what the right. ideal business looks like right. as far as setup you know is it monday to friday is, is it a seasonal business. We have businesses that, right. that are in operation seven, seven months a year and you have four yeah. or five months off. Uh, but yes, it, it, it does happen often, but um, keep an open mind, you know, if we're working with myself or, or another consultant and you'll be surprised to hear uh, what's out there and what options you have available. That's terrific. I, I, by the way, I, I'm a fan of your show, by the way, I started listening to your show and I was listening to, to some of the interviews that you've even done in the past, you know, and I remember you were talking about, I think it was like one of like the mosquito franchises, you know, and I said, wow, that's very clever, you know, is that, you know, these type of franchises, right, they get to work, I guess it's like, what, seven months, maybe during the year, depending on where you're located, you know, and then right. they have those other five months, right? Like you said, to, to do those things that they want to do. And, and I think what happens, Giuseppe, is you're right. There's sometimes, you know, someone might be a match for franchising, but they might pick the wrong franchise, you know, that's not best suited for them. And that's really where, you know, I, I see the value of your service is, is you know what, what kind of uh, franchise to kind of point them to. I, I've noticed over the years, too, I, I got involved in franchising, I, I guess it was around 1999. And at that time, mm-hmm. I think they said there was only like 1,200 systems. And like today, it's like, what is it, like 3,500 plus? I, I, it, 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 it's so hard to choose yeah. today, isn't it? I mean, there's so many out, so many different choices out there. Um, uh, where, where do you begin? <laughs> it, it's it's overwhelming. And that yeah, it, it's the number is, is I'm hearing 35. I, I've heard as high as 4,000. There, yeah, yeah, it's overwhelming. And yeah. what happens is that everyone will, will start looking at brands. And I said that that's, that is the – almost the worst way to approach it because you don't know right. what you're getting into. You, right. and, and on top of it, I've heard dozens of times, uh, you know, I, I started looking at a brand. I got excited to find out uh, the territory was completely sold out in all of yeah. New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, right. you know, the tri-state area. And so what I tell people is once you find the type of business, I, I go mm-hmm. to work. I go, I go to work behind the scenes to find out, you know, is the territory available? Right. And if it is, are the are the uh, you know the existing franchisees looking to possibly sell their business? You know, maybe right. it's not listed, but there's That's a possibility true. there. Um, but point. more importantly, I'll find out and say, okay, you know, franchisor, you know, this is uh, I'm speaking with uh, you know Joe Smith, and Joe right. is looking for this and that. This is what he has to invest, and in. we'll have a conversation to, to see if it's a good fit. Because ultimately, I'm going to make that introduction, and and I want to make sure it's a, a solid fit. Before we move forward, if not, then we'll, we'll look at another business. So yeah. very overwhelming. And, and I will say this, not every franchise is built the same. You had right. mentioned Mosquito Spring, and, and thank you for, 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 uh, for listening in. I always appreciate people listening on the show. Oh, absolutely. And Mosquito Spring, you know, that Mosquito Spring franchise is, is really what, if you break it down, it, it is a lifestyle brand, seven, right. seven months a year. But more importantly, it's not – necessary a mosquito spraying business it's a right. marketing technology company it's a business mm-hmm. that yeah. is turnkey they do the marketing right. and right. not only that they're also the call center so they're actually doing a lot of that for you they and and oh by the way we happen to be a mosquito spraying they, they can literally turn that business and do it for painting that model can right. turn that business and do it for for cleaning so really right. it's right. what what is that that support structure that infrastructure of that business giving you that's great. What, what do your clients feel? I mean, in the beginning, this is something that I've never experienced, Giuseppe, is I mean, like when they come to you, you know, um, I, I mean, it's it's franchising could, as we said earlier, it could be a used word overwhelming, you know, because there's so much out mm-hmm. there today. And in some cases, it could be a little bit expensive. You know, there's low cost models, medium and of course, high, you know. So, I mean, what are some of your clients um, that feeling at that time? Are, are they are they nervous or what's what's that like? 
Yeah, I, I always say, you know, we, we sometimes confuse nervous with excitement, right? Same, same exact thing. <laughs> we sweat, yeah. the heart, heart, heart beats a little bit quicker. But, yeah, I yep. mean, I think, you know, fear always comes into play. So that's why we, yeah. we have uh, an intro call. And we, ex- we explain the process. Don't, don't worry about the franchises. Let's, you know, intro call, 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Let's figure out, number one, is business ownership the right fit? And right. more, and then next step is franchising the right fit. So we talk about the pros and cons, and quite frankly, we we decide if we want to work together. Right? This is okay. Right, we're course. we're a good fit. So if we are, we send over a little questionnaire, and then we have a, a second call. Once again, you know, it's second step of the process. There's there's four stages, and we dive a little bit deeper. Why do you want to own a business? We look right. at financials because. If we're looking at a big retail like a McDonald's franchise, but we mm-hmm. our budget is much much less, obviously we're we're going to have to have that conversation as well. Right. And funding, we we make introductions, so we do each each step of the process slowly at the pace of of each uh, of each person we're working with, and along the way, if fear comes up, and it you know it comes up in different ways, like sure. know, rescheduling, or I have to think about it. Right. We, we we figure out what is the issue. What's what's hold, what, what are you right. fearful of? And right. I'm a numbers yeah. guy. I, I I worked in the investment world, so we we basically yeah. say if it's if it's money, let's let's break it down. What is the right. investment? You know what? Right. W- what's your living expense? You know how long do you have? You know how much do you have in savings? So we really break it down in, in chunks to make it manageable right. to really put the the fear at bay and and figure out if if, if it's a good choice. Uh, we create a model. You know, what's your ideal business look like mm-hmm. on our third call? Right. Um, you know, we, we, we give that to them, and then we find two or three companies that, that match uh, what they're looking for. And, we, and we're having emails and texts and conversations along the way uh, right. if they have concerns and, and things like that and answering questions, uh, general questions about franchising. Yeah. And then the, the fourth step is if, if they're good to go and they'd like to proceed, then we make an introduction to each franchise company where they continue the process. But we're holding your hand every step of the way, following up, right. making sure you're, you're getting your questions answered, coaching on the questions you should be asking. And the joke is, you know, we don't charge for our services. Uh, right. you know, we, we, we get compensated directly from the franchise companies if right. you buy a franchise. So I, I, franchise. I tell that, but... I, I tell I tell everyone the, the joke is if you work with me you ha- you're stuck with me for life because even after you buy <laughs> I'm going to be following up just to you know make sure you're happy get your your right. feedback and right. if you have a referral we appreciate it. or if you want to expand we can help you as, as well within the brand or looking at other brands so I'm a great resource I, I've you know been a franchisor a franchisee. Um, so I've been on both ends. I've owned non-franchise businesses. So mm-hmm. um, that first call is crucial. That first call ha- will save you hundreds of hours, possibly right. yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars investing in a business when you ha- when maybe you really should just be looking at a different career. And we cover right. all that on the, on our first call. That's terrific. It's so important. It must be a great feeling for you too. You know that that you're part of a significant part of their life, Giuseppe, aren't you? I mean, you're 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 changing their lives. You're guiding them. You're a teacher. You're a coach. Um, and 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 it's it's really it's one of those life changing moments. It's as big as a marriage to some extent, isn't it? It must be a wonderful feeling for you. You know, you know when when you match somebody to to a franchise. Oh yeah, I mean it is. It's one of the biggest. It's a, it's a great feeling. Um, when people say, "What's your success rate?" and I say, "I think my success rate is a hundred percent." It's hard to gauge based off because if you're not a fit for a business or a franchise, then I right. may new may new uh, recruiter maybe that you should speak right. with. So right, it's a it's a great feeling. I, I feel like I've I've saved people um, ma- their marriages. I kind of jokingly say, right, you know, you're you're investing in a business. The first thing I say is, "Are you married?" or you know, yeah. is your partner or spouse or who, you know, who, who's going to be involved in the business. And, and I have them on the, at least the first call because, right. you know, you, you may have purchased a home and, and you didn't do that on your own. You involved everyone. Right. Um, so you want to have those people involved. And it, it's, it's amazing when I get everyone on the call, it's like, wait a second, maybe they're not exactly on the same page. Let's, let's figure yeah. this out. You know, th- it may be, a, it may be a second call, but it's a, right. it, it truly is a great, uh, you know, a great feeling. Uh, I love, I love helping people, and if it means not buying a franchise, no, no hard feelings. You know, we, right. we can we can look at other directions. But if if it is a franchise, I'm 
I'm here to help, and uh, my resources, you know, are, are, are free. So I say take advantage of, of what we have to offer and my experience. That's terrific. Are there any categories that you – tough question, because I know, I know you work with a lot of different industries, Giuseppe, but are there any categories that, that you particularly like or maybe are intrigued by? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we everything is customized based off of what you're looking for. Um, yeah, you right. know, the pandemic has definitely – changed yep. up things and we get we yeah. got to see which franchise companies kind of stood out um you know so, some things that really stand out is small businesses hurting right now many small businesses yeah. so uh there are businesses around uh you know reduction of expenses and small business coaching which right really sits down to help the small business to figure out number one where can we cut expense and number two you know how are we doing business going forward right we're retail right. Um, maybe we realize we can do it all virtually. How do we, you know, do yeah. we do both? Do we just switch to virtual? So those categories are nice. And um, home services, home services have just exploded. Yep. Um, yep. I think people right. are, are, are taking, uh, you know, we, we ha there's, there's franchises that will build, uh, they specialize in building home offices and uh, spraying for mosquitoes. You know, I mentioned that because people yeah. are utilizing right. their backyards a lot more right. often since they weren't on vacation. So yeah. obviously – Things will will get back to normal, but uh, you know, at, at some point, I think people are still going to be utilizing their homes, maybe traveling more, so that they don't have time mm -hmm. to work on their homes. So, uh, right. we've seen a, a definitely a a big kind of you know big big growth in in home service uh, uh, style businesses. That's terrific. I um, one of the topics that you address in like your webinars, Giuseppe, is is how much investment is needed to own a franchise. How, how do you typically respond to that question? As far as investment size, you know, you're looking at there's franchise fees and then there's uh, you know the item seven, the investment range. Right. So in franchises, we typically are working with it's you're looking at seventy five thousand plus, um, mm -hmm. and that's factoring in franchise fee. That's factoring in, you know, marketing or if there's a, a build out, it's going to be it's going to be a, a retail location. It's going to be over six figures, but right. uh, about seventy five thousand. And and there's some confusion there because people see franchise fee and they're like, well, I've seen the franchise fees less, and that's just one of the expenses. Yeah. That's a one time, right. essentially, to, to purchase the license from the franchise right. company. And then there's all right, there's marketing, there's computers, there's mm -hmm. uh, you know any any type of you know, banners or things that you need for the, for the actual business inventory. So uh, it definitely ranges. Um, and we take a look at net worth, you know, liquidity. We want to make yeah. sure that you do have enough money in the bank. So if you do have a right. slow month, you're not, right. you know, <laughs> in, in yeah, financial course, trouble. Right. So we, we, right. we take a look at all that, but um, you know, you're paying, you know, other startups are, are going to be much less, but then you, you factor in the cost and time to figure out the brand and the system and that may take two or three years of lost revenue because you're figuring it out. Uh, we call franchising as the uh, unfair advantage because you are literally mm -hmm. set up day one. Right. Um, some businesses, yeah. you, you, you literally, as you're in training, um, you know, the, the franchisor has a call center uh, bringing you in customers. I mean, that, yeah, it, it's that's built great. on autopilot. So yeah. uh, some great opportunities say it's, you know, you, you, you find something that fits you and you only don't look at mm -hmm. the hot franchises. Um, right. Kind of like when I was in the investment world, what are the hot stocks? What's the hot fund? I <laughs> right. said, who, I said, who cares? What, what, yeah, what's your risk true. level, right? Right. If you right. can't handle risk, then you may not want a, a large cap exactly. growth. Maybe you want a bond fund. So um, I, I, I say that jokingly, but yeah, let, you know, there's definitely something. There's a franchise in every industry, every yeah. investment level. Franchising is, is actually, I, I almost say it's not an industry. It's just, a, it's simply a proven right. so business model. Industries. Right. Yeah. yeah. And in, in, in every industry. Yeah. That's fantastic. I, it's, it's been interesting for me, uh, Giuseppe, because I've noticed like <clears throat> some strange, and I don't want to call them strange industries, but you know, I've seen like, um, I've had like, um, uh, dental franchises on the show, you know, or chiropractic franchises on the show. And, and I like, if you asked me that, like maybe 15 years ago, I would have said, no way. You know what I mean? It was like, how do you have a dental franchise or, you know, a chiropractic franchise or something like that, you know, but it just seems like more industries continue to franchise, you know, is, is I guess they're sold, you know, on the concept. I mean, it's a great way of, of 
distribution or, or going into new markets, you know, and uh, it, it, it's sometimes surprising. To, I haven't been to a franchise show in years now. I guess it's been several years since I've been to one. I know you've probably been to some over the years too, you know, but it's, it's always interesting to see some, some crazy industries, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there, it's literally in every industry. Um, you know, you always you say, okay, it, this may be a great industry, but does, does the franchisor have everything in order to right. support their right. franchisees? But go, going back to to the dental, yeah, I mean, their fran- franchise companies are are looking and saying, how can we truly support our franchisees? So a lot of right. franchisors, uh, not everyone, but a, a yeah. lot of them are bringing in-house uh, call centers. So now. Right each location doesn't even have to pick up the phone and maybe, maybe, um, maybe not necessarily in dental, but in, in brick and mortar style businesses that we work Mm -hmm. with, the, uh, the person at the front desk, you know, may not even be needed. You have a call center 24 seven so that the call is a miss because what happens? Someone calls you, you don't pick up the phone. They may go to the next listing in Google. So 24 seven call center, they're able to upsell you book appointments, uh, take, take payment for you. And then on the other side, they have an in-house uh, turnkey marketing system. And these systems, the call center and the, and the marketing system, almost works for you know, any franchise. It really doesn't, doesn't right. make a difference where they can. And, and the beauty of franchising in 90 to 95% of the cases is that you don't need any experience. So mm-hmm. you know, the, de- the dental may, may be the example, and I'm not as, as familiar. You may need some experience there. But mosquito yeah. spraying, home services – uh, you know, the, uh, the, the small business uh, coaching and, and, you know, reducing of expenses, no experience is needed. You, you need to have certain right. traits. You need to be outgoing to, to work right. with businesses. Right. But, um, you know, and, and all the other ones, they train you from A to Z. They just they want franchisees that are open to following a system um, that are easily that can easily be trained. Uh, and once again, going back, harping again, saying it again, following that system. If you follow right. the system chances are you're going to be successful. But uh, going back to the dental, you know, once you get to a company at scale, you know, they could purchase inventory and supplies and equipment at a much uh, discounted rate because now maybe they have 100 locations and they're buying the same equipment for all 100 and maybe getting a 30% discount. So there's some major, and, and, and just the network itself. It's like, yeah, I, my uh, family lives in New Jersey, but I also have family in Arizona, and they're referring, right. you know, back and forth because you have locations in all 50 states. So, yeah, definitely yeah. some some big trends, and uh, I really like uh, what we're seeing. Yeah, same here. We had um, we had the number one franchise too. It was one of the tax franchises. This was going back many years, Giuseppe. And and mm-hmm. my question to him was what I wanted to know the most was I, I said, well, how did you become the number one franchisee out of like 2,500 franchisees? And his answer was so simple. He, he said, I, I just did whatever they told me to do. And that's how I became the number one franchise. You know, so it, it, and it seems so simple, doesn't it? You know, I, I like how you use – it's something I've never even heard, you know, in, in – you know, 14 years of doing the show is, is that franchising is, is an unfair advantage. That is very clever. You know, if you think about that, it's true, isn't it? You know, it's, it, it is it's an unfair absolutely. advantage. That's very it's clever. A, it's right? an unfair advantage. Yeah. You, you start yeah. right away. Um, to your point, I mean, how simple what your statement I, or his statement, uh, you know, yeah. we follow the system. There are so many people and I, and, and this is the first thing I talk about. If you are not looking to follow the system, don't right. bother. And people don't shot. bother. Well, what, right. do you, what do you mean? Don't bother. Yeah. That, the, the, if you're going to buy a McDonald's franchise with the intention to expand their menu, you're out of your mind, I tell people. You right. are not going to change it. Exactly. You can add it, creative ways of marketing and using right. the assets. A- absolutely. You're not, right. It's not like you can't do anything, but if you're going to change the McDonald's menu, right. I, I, and I use happen. that, you know, I jokingly say that, it, it's, not, it's, it's not a good fit. Yeah. Um, and, and, and another thing I say is, you know, you know going back to the unfair advantage, to anyone listening in that is an employee and they feel like their their job is safe, their job is not safe, right? right. An employee yep. does not have any control necessarily of their future. Business yeah. ownership, obviously, th- th- there's risks, but you know they're, they're controlled risk, and you're you know in control of that business T- to an extent. You know you're able right. to pivot and able to change. So, I tell every employee out there that's thought about business ownership, I encourage them to contact me. But right. we show you how to build. A, a, basically a safety net for your job. So what's a safety net? A safety yeah. net is you buy life insurance, you buy health and auto insurance. What do you do for right. your job? Most of us don't do anything. Right. So I always say, 
Yeah. The safety net is obviously there's, there's no insurance per se, but if you start a side business, a business that maybe is part time and you do get furloughed, you do end up losing your job, mm-hmm. you can easily transition into a, a side business. Maybe it's a, right. a home service like a mosquito spraying business, but you have those opportunities to really you know, scale your right. business and, and diversify and and you have that backup versus I lost my job. What do I do now? So right. uh, I encourage everyone to, to look at it that way. Um, but uh, but I'm more than glad to, you know, anyone wants to have that initial conversation, had the, had any interest. I'm even even giving away, uh, we have a, a free book download that I that I give to everyone. Yeah, I encourage everyone That's to read it. Franchise Freedom, look yeah. And, Is that the book, Franchise yes, Freedom, right. Giuseppe? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yep, maybe you could the, talk uh, the, a little bit about the book. I, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, you know, um, read that at some point, you know, because I'm always fascinated in franchising, of course. But maybe you could talk about, you know, like why you wrote the book, you know, because because I think it's terrific. <laughs> yeah, I so the, the 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 podcast and the book are both called Franchise Freedom. Yeah. Um And if and uh, I wrote the book because I wanted to get, you know, a lot of the conversations I had actually fran- franchise franchise freedom the podcast we recorded some some episodes and we transcribed them and we put them in a book. Right. We said, let's wow, leverage what we're clever. saying on a daily basis. And the book is a how to of figiring out if business ownership is the right fit. Uh, yeah. I do realize sometimes people don't want to jump on the call right away. So I give them a resource. You know what? Read the book. It takes about right. an hour, um, sure. goes through the steps, the same steps we go, obvi- we go through, obviously not in as much detail because we're going right. to dive a little bit deeper. I'm going to have specific right. questions, but I wrote it to help the, the person that has been toying with the idea, has been thinking about the idea of business ownership or what, you know, maybe there was misconceptions of what a franchise is. And, right. um, you know, it's a, it's a quick read. I, I have people that read it six months later, they contact me when they read it, they, you know, listen to the podcast and they jump on the call with me, but wow. it's a great resource. Uh, they know what to expect. So they know, you know, our process, they know, right. um, you know, what, what a franchise is. So, uh, on those intro calls, if you've read my book, we dive right into, you know, that consultation to figure out, you know, the some yeah. businesses that match what they're looking for. So I, I kind of wanted to get everything that was, I was saying daily and 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 all yeah. the info in my head. And I want to put it on paper. So, oh yeah. Um, so we yeah. So it's uh, it's been great. You know, it's we we give it out uh, at all our meetings and people listening in on the show. And we've got some uh, some pretty good feedback from it. That's terrific. So what's what's next for you, Giuseppe? It sounds like I mean you're you're very happy and it seems to me that, you know, in studying your background, you're you're going to continue doing this for for a long time. So kind of like what's in the future then for you? Uh for me, we so we cover the entire country, uh, the US mm-hmm. and Canada. So my um, you know, for me it's uh, growing my uh my podcast, uh, you know, I've been on other other shows like today and uh just uh, getting the word out that um yeah. you know, that there is that there are, are options. I've actually, uh, I had a, another business, uh, you know, uh, that, that we had sold uh, last year to double down mm-hmm. on this business and really, you know, sp- have the extra time to work with our candidates. Sometimes, uh, yeah. you know, they're not available until the evening because they have right. a job. So, right. Um, so, so, uh, no, no, no difference as far as what I'm going to do, except that I made the extra time to, really focus in and, and spend the extra hours, uh, you know, with our candidates because sometimes right. we're, we're on the phone every other day. So my, my sure. commitment is to really double down, you know, have the extra time and work with candidates all over the U S and Canada. That's terrific. What's the best way Giuseppe, well, for our listeners to get more information, uh, you know, whether it's getting the, 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 the book franchise freedom or, or more information on your services, is there any like websites you can kind of direct our listeners to? Yeah, so since my name is so difficult to spell, I, I we, we went easy. We went with the initials. So we went. So the website is GG. So those are my initials. GG the franchise guide, G U I D E dot com. And great. if you go to the website, you have access to a uh, free. Uh, if you click on book, you get the uh, download of my of my new book that came out. Um, you know, actually, well, I say new book. It came out last year. Okay. Um, there's also a webinar, which is a concise version of the book, if uh, you're That's pressed great. for time, as well as our podcast and a blog. So there's a ton of information that you got. You can look over, and, and on the site, you can book a call directly with me. I answer all my emails, and I do all my calls. I don't have someone ca- uh, calling for me, so yeah. I'll be more than glad uh, to speak with anyone that has any interest uh, in business ownership. 
That's great. Well, I'm going to listen to some of those podcasts today, actually, Giuseppe. So I, I, I've, uh, I'm going to be a new fan to the shows. And it was great having you on the show. And I'd like to already invite you back, you know, over the next year or so as you continue to grow, because I think your service is so important. M- Marty, it was a pleasure. It was a, I had a great time. I was looking forward to this. And, uh, yeah, looking forward Thank to speaking you. again Likewise. very soon. Thanks so much, Giuseppe. You have a great day today. And we'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up on segment two, you're going to hear what every franchisepreneur needs to know before buying a franchise. We're going to play a clip from our popular Great Quotes in Franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchisers, are you looking to reach aspiring entrepreneurs looking to buy a franchise? Are you looking to reach a highly educated audience on franchising? For over eight years, Franchise Interviews has been giving an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. Our weekly franchise radio show where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts and attorneys, and our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Hi, everyone. This is Marty McDermott, the president of Franchise Interviews, and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising. Reach podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. Well, one of the shows I strongly recommend listening to if you're an aspiring entrepreneur is Stop Riding the Pine. And the show is hosted by Jamie J. And Jamie is an amazing interviewer. He speaks with entrepreneurs on a variety of topics. And I had the pleasure of appearing on Stop Riding the Pine. And one of the topics that Jamie and I was were focusing on were key elements to successful franchising. So this particular clip of Great Quote and Franchising, we're going to call this There's No Creativity in Franchising, and we're going to explain why. What do I want this franchise to do for me? You know, um, why are you considering getting into franchising? Because, you know, a lot of times people that get into franchising, Jamie, I think probably should not get into franchising. They'll go into it for the wrong reasons. Well, they'll see the success of one franchise and they'll say, God, I wish I owned one of these. But right. that doesn't mean that they should necessarily buy into a Dunkin' Donuts franchise. And sometimes they go into the wrong franchise opportunity. So they might be suited for a franchise but they're getting into the wrong franchise, you know? Um, so I, I think you really have to be, um, you really have to be open, you mm-hmm. know, to, um, uh, to all the different categories that are out there. Um, again, going deep within yourself and asking yourself, what do I want this franchise to do for me? If you don't want to work on weekends, you know, then, um, you know, don't, get into, you know, uh, one of these like children franchises where they're real busy on Saturdays or Sundays, you know, so you have to say, you know, what do I want it to do for me? You know, and you ask yourself those deep, um, those deep rooted questions. Perfect. Perfect. I think that's huge. It's, it's very important for people to not jump into something. Absolutely. Because it's expensive too, Jamie. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you're signing a 10 year contract, you know, which Mm -hmm. is, um, uh, 10 years of your life, you know, you know, it's it's a long time, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's oh my gosh. Like, I, I won't compare it to the, the sanctity of marriage, you know, but right. <laughs> sometimes it, 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 it goes further than that, you know. I mean, having that, that 10-year commitment, you know, so it is a very big commitment um, financially. It's a big commitment. Um, I think you have to have the support from your family, you know, whether it's it's, it's your wife and your children, because the first year – Typically, from what I've learned in doing this show such a long time now, is um, it, it takes a long time to, to, to get it off the ground. Even if it is a Subway franchise or you know a very recognizable brand name, you're still going to be putting a lot of work into it. You know, so right. you might be missing that time from your family. And, and you know, um, you, sometimes people get into franchising for the wrong reasons as well. Maybe they'll have a bad day at work. You know, and they say, "Oh, I hate my boss." You know, I'm I, out of here. <laughs> I want to be my own boss. You know, and you know, I, I, again. Franchising may not be the best alternative for that type of person. You know, there's so many different types of, of levels of, of entrepreneur. You know, franchising is just one. I mean, you could just initially start your own business where you get to be the creator. You know, there's no, I hate to say this, but there's no creativity in franchising sometimes. You know, I mean, you have to follow somebody else's 
creation, and that's okay for some people, you know. For me, it, it wouldn't be, you know, be, and, and I'm assuming in, in getting to know you over time, you know, you might have trouble with that as well because, again, you like to create, you know. I, I, I couldn't get outside of, the, outside of the structure, but I understand why that would be a good thing because exactly okay, they've been there, they've done that. You won't make the same mistakes that, that the original franchisor made because – they found the solutions along the way, and that's part of the attraction. For exactly, exactly. I just I published. Um, yeah, it sounds like I'm bragging, Jamie, but I just got one of uh, a, a paper published in. Uh, you deserve it. <laughs> a if you'd like to hear that whole interview with Jamie J of Stop Riding the Pine, all you have to do is go to stopridingthepine.com, and you can hear the whole podcast. And lastly, we just want to thank everyone for making this podcast such a big success. We've, it's hard to imagine that we've been doing it now 10 years ago. It was one of the things I was talking about with Jamie on the show is the longevity of the show is, you know, what started out to be a, a one-month project turned out to be 10 years. So I just want to thank everyone for um, listening to the podcast and, and, and making it such a success. So thanks, everyone. We'll see you again soon with another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising from Franchise Interviews. Take care, everyone. Franchise Interviews. From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews.